you're watching Seven River Sports here on KQEG. I'm your host, Terry Erickson. Each week, an inside look into sports, into wellness, into fitness. Well, today's a special show. Hey, we're in the middle of football season, but today's guest, we're going to welcome her to the entire community, the brand new Eagle women's basketball coach, Karen Milton. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Terry. Thanks welcome to La Crosse. Yeah, exactly. In the Cooley region, <laughs> by the way. God's country, that's what, that's what it's called it's in this gorgeous. part of the world. It is gorgeous. A cross-country trip from California. You take Route 66, by the way? I don't even know. I think I was on it part of the way, yeah. The most famous <laughs> road from the West Coast to the Midwest and on is Route 66. Every time I'm in Europe, they always want to know about Route 66. So you came from there all the way to La Crosse. Yep. Enjoyable trip? Yeah, it was a great trip. I actually had to do it pretty fast, so I got here in a matter of three days. So I had some paperwork to sign and things to take care of. So between meeting movers and getting that all organized, taking off, I left on, uh, it was a Wednesday after lunch. I actually made it in like two days, two and a half days. I got here Friday afternoon. So, so it was a good trip. Gorgeous, yeah, it's pretty. So you had an enjoyable summer. I suppose, you, like all of us, you watched some of the Olympics. Loved it, loved it. Especially, obviously, the women's basketball. Huge fan. They're pretty good, aren't them. they? Yeah, they're pretty dominant. <laughs> pretty dominant. So you, you, uh, if you want to watch a great game, definitely that was uh, the one to watch. So they're a great team. I don't know if a lot. Of, I don't know if a lot of viewers can uh, really do appreciate, like I do women's college and women's WNBA basketball and the athleticism, how gifted they are, how special they are as athletes. I go to Lynx games once in a while. I mean, I, so I know how good they are. I'm a huge, huge, huge fan, obviously, and just for me, it's great just to watch that level and what they're doing and learn from them. But uh, Maya Moore, uh, she's incredible. Lindsey Whalen just leads away as a point guard, and, and Cheryl Reeves has done a great job. So I'm a huge fan of them. We'll be cheering for them throughout the playoffs, and that'll start soon. So right. it'll be fun to watch them again. Well, again, our guest today, Karen Middleton, the new head women's coach at, at UWL. We're going to get to know her since our viewers have never, I, will, I have never met her until we went on the air today, uh, get to know you up close and personal. So let's go, let's go before we talk about um, UWL and your interview process, let's, let's start way back. Let's go down that, that proverbial road um, in memory lane, actually, yeah. to uh, you starting out. I read a little bit about you before we went on the air, and a uh, high school player of the year twice, and a tremendous high school player, but you, you started your interest in athletics before that. I did. Um, grew up in a really small town, uh, Jefferson, South Carolina, little uh, a farm town. We had garden growing up. Um, my mom and dad, uh, older brother, two younger sisters, and my dad was the youngest of ten children. So lots of aunts and uncles and cousins all over the place. So uh, you know, uh, obviously our church was a big part of it, and sports was a huge part of what we did. So. Uh, you know, a lot of family, a lot of activity, and just uh, love growing up. My whole family is still there, so um, I'm sure they'll be watching this at some point and, and uh, being happy and excited for me as well. You know, uh, speaking, growing up in a small town, growing up on a farm? A garden, not a farm farm as, a, a as you see it around here, yeah. Well, <laughs> well he, he, speaking of that, I have lots of things I want to share with you and talk about, but one of my favorite coaches of all times, and we're going to get back to her later, is Pat Summit, who died in June. Here's what she said about growing up on a small town farm. When you grow up on a dairy farm, cows don't take the day off. Or in your case, plants don't take a day off. No. And uh, <laughs> so you work every day, and my dad always said, don't let anyone outwork you. Did you learn that when you were young? Oh, for sure. Um, we grew watermelons, so we had huge fields of watermelons, acres and acres of it, but we also grew corn and potatoes and beans and tomatoes and cucumbers. My mom canned uh, pickles, so we would have to get up before the sun got up because in South Carolina it's so hot and humid to, to beat the heat and take care of the, the farming that needed to be taken care of. and. Yeah, I mean, we worked. 
But um, that's what we did, and that's what we knew how to do, and I think it's obviously really helped all of us um, as we grew up and gone our separate ways doing different things, but hard work's the core of all of it. You know, I, I, we have a little bit of in common here because I grew up in a sim similar situation on a farm, and my, one of my heroes growing up listening to Out of the World of Sports was Paul Harvey. Mm -hmm. And we listened to him every day at noon and sometimes at 4 o'clock, the rest of the story. Yep. He talked about the fact that the, many of the good people in this world were born at the end of dirt-covered roads, <laughs> where the values of hard work, uh, family, um, all the other important values were learned. Does that describe you? No doubt about it. Uh, learned to drive a car by driving a tractor first. Um, I mean, it was just what we did, and that's what we knew. But we loved it, and uh, a lot about family, just family around us and community and all the support and helping each other and being there for each other, and those, those values are what I try to instill in our team as well, just having that support for each other, having each other's back, being there for each other, and um, having that family-type feel as a team as you're away from your own family. There's many quotes that I've seen on t-shirts and posted anywhere. One of them, I like a lot of them, but one of them I really like is uh, one that's used in all facets of life. You just referenced it a little bit. You probably didn't know it, but here's, here's what it is. I've got your back. Yep, exactly. And that's what, you know, you can, you can have a team filled of the most talented skilled players, but if they don't play together, um, what I want our team to play like, and this is something that we talk about from day one, is not letting each other down. You know, and to know and be so invested in, in each other that you're going to work hard for you, and I don't want to disappoint you because of I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. So, I mean, it goes back, like we're talking about, about family and having that support and being there for each other. and. We're going to come back to that because guess what? X's and O's, important. Strategy, important. Preparation, yes. Scouting reports, yes. But the intangibles, exactly. the important things, uh, that's where some coaches are missing. But let's go back to the, a trip down memory lane. Uh, an exceptional high school athlete. Multi-sport? Volleyball, basketball, softball. Pretty much every sport our little school had for girls, I did it, my sisters did it. Um, my brother kind of led the way, he's five years older than I am. He played basketball and he got me into it and started. My dad was a basketball, baseball player in high school, so it was, it was what we did. Expectations, Yep. it's the bloodlines, yep. but then, I don't know if our viewers, just so you know, Karen Middleton, the new head women's coach at UWL, played for the Gamecocks for four years, uh, scored 1,700 points, and set a single season record in three-point shots. Captain, all-conference, you ready for this? The best shooter in University of South Carolina history. I knew my says. role. <laughs> I knew my role. I was you, a shooter. <laughs> you never met a shot you didn't like, right? I shoot to your own and shoot to your off. Keep, <laughs> so it was, no, but I think the big part of it is, and one of my biggest mentors to this day was my college coach, is my college coach, Nancy Wilson. Um, and I was just sharing earlier with my coaching theory class, and we were talking about confidence um, that coaches give you. Uh, she gave me tremendous confidence as a shooter. Um, she never told me not to shoot. She believed that I was going to make the next shot, and that's a huge part of, of coaching. But again, I was a, I was a three-point shooter. I knew my role, but I was a part of some really special teams and some great teammates. Good. Before we take a break, continue quickly on uh, memory lane. Like, uh, you graduated from college. Give us your quick stops before you ended up at Cal State Fullerton, before you came to La Crosse. Quick stop, I was undergrad in education, so I student taught my first semester out of playing, so I've been a half a year out of that. Um, at the time, the restricted earnings position came open at South Carolina for the first time, so it's like the graduate assistance position. I went on and got my master's while I was restricted earnings coach. Um, after I completed my master's, I went to Eastern Washington for three years, my first stop out of South Carolina. From there, I was very fortunate to go on to Stanford for 10 years to work under Tara Vanderveer. Um, we all know that name, by yep, the way, Hall of Famer. Yep, definitely. After Stanford, I started working my way back 
toward the East Coast. I was at Illinois for two years, and I was the head coach at Western Carolina for six years before last year being at Cal State Fullerton. A globetrotter, all over nonetheless. Yep. And you enjoyed all of them? Any, any quick defining moments as you reflect on all those? Well, I think my time at Stanford was the most impactful for me. Um, who Tara is, what she does, how she um, coaches her teams, um, the things that she emphasizes uh, was huge for me in my development as a coach. And uh, what a, a great place to be with the uh, emphasis not just on basketball, but the academics. And, you know, that's what's so exciting about UWL is that combination. Well, I know that there was quite a uh, interview process, selection committee in a national search for the UWL women's coach. And I, re I read a lot of the bios and there's no question, your resume, and our viewers should know this, is about as impressive as I have ever seen. So I can see why you were selected. I appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm well, excited. We're gonna step away, we're gonna come back to some of those things and we're gonna step forward to what this community should expect from Eagle basketball. We're gonna step away, we'll be right back after these messages. At Schneider Heating and Air Conditioning, we have assembled a championship team who listens to what your needs are. We install carrier comfort systems that improve the comfort, efficiency, and the air quality of your home and workplace. We serve you with highly trained technicians who are prompt, friendly, and honest. For Gold Star treatment, turn to the experts, Carrier and Schneider Heating and Air Conditioning. Schneider Heating and Air Conditioning, your comfort is our business. LASIK surgery at Mayo Clinic Health System. Well, I was very nearsighted. Um, I couldn't see three feet in front of me without things being blurry, so I had to wear glasses. We screen patients. We try to make sure that they're appropriate candidates for LASIK, that their prescription is within the range, that it's reasonable to do it, uh, that they have a good understanding of what they can expect, that they have a good understanding of what the benefits are and what the risks are. For more information on LASIK surgery, contact Mayo Clinic Health System. Welcome back to Seven Rivers Sports. Again, our guest today, the new women's head basketball coach, UWL Eagles, Karen Middleton. Well, you saw the posting uh, nationwide across an opening and a head coaching job. Division one, you had all kinds of stops. You 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 were basically very experienced, and you were perhaps comfortable in California. And you saw this. What attracted you to lacrosse? Once I saw it open and did some research and learned more about it, you know, I, I referred to Stanford a little bit earlier, but. Um, Knowing, first of all, how competitive the Wyatt Conference is for women's basketball caught my attention. And then once I learned more about UWL, the academic combination that it provides its students, and that combination was really attractive to me. Um, you know, I've got some friends that are in the area and kind of know of the background a little bit with UWL. Um, the national championships that have been won, the success on the athletic side that's been there. Um, but to me, the, the biggest part of that with the athletics was the academic side and being able to present a student that you're recruiting that combination of both. And that's that's tough to turn down, you know, because as, as women athletes, you know, your long-term career is, it, you know, you're going into your profession. You're not going to go on to uh, opportunities, although you could play overseas in women's basketball and there's tons of opportunities for that. You're going to really fall back on your education. And I think the combination that UWL has um, is second to none. And I'm excited about the opportunity and it's uh, a great product to be able to sell and recruit to. Um, but the thing that sold me the most once I was able to get on campus was just meeting the people and the support that's there. Mm -hmm. um, Kim's doing a tremendous jo job as our athletics director, uh, Aaron Thacker, um, they've been tremendous throughout. All the coaches, uh, the professors in the exercise and sports science department that I teach in, they'll come in, they'll sit down in your office, introduce themselves. They've been so welcoming and helpful. Um, and it's, it's that environment, that atmosphere that you want to be a part of. Well, in, in case uh, some of the viewers don't know, UWL, one of the top Division three 
schools in the nation just received an award again uh, academically and certainly athletically but you know the last few years in particular the NC2A has uh, has mandated uh, division three um, more enforcement of the academic standards higher expectations coaches monitoring grades how are you going to do that you know, I think that's the the aspect that's always been easy for me because the academic side of things has always been number one. I think sometimes um, some of my frustrations at the Division One level has been sometimes the academic side of things um, and the experience to a degree, but the academic side of things of, you know, young men, young women not ending up getting their degree, um, putting more emphasis on the athletic side of it. Um, to monitor, I've always been one, uh, great relationships with my players. Um, I usually, what I usually do is I split our players up amongst myself and coaches, and we meet regularly, weekly with them just to catch up on what's going on in their classes. It has nothing to do with basketball, it's all about their classes. What do they have coming up? What grades have they gotten back? How are they doing? Do they need help in anything? Just to catch up and make sure they're, they've got all they need, they're utilizing the resources that we have to make sure that they are successful in the classroom. Good segue into quote number two from Pat Summit. You ready? Ready. She says, they don't care necessarily, my players don't necessarily care how much I know as a coach, strategically and so on. They don't really care that much about it. Unless they know that I care about them as a person. Is that you? It's huge, you know. Um, it's not all about basketball. It, it's not, and it can't be, you know. That, and I think with Division Three, that's the huge balance that you find. It's um, you want your players to have a great experience. You want them to enjoy. I want them to enjoy lacrosse. I want them to experience other things on campus besides basketball. Get involved in some different um, clubs or, or different opportunities so that they can keep growing as a person. Um, yes, we're gonna work hard on the court. We're gonna challenge them. We're gonna help them get better. We're gonna work on those skills that we need to, but it's the whole experience of being at lacrosse that I want them to enjoy and feel and be excited about. And that's what, what's gonna help them come, keep coming back. I have so many questions to, to I'd love to have you back on the show, but there's a quick quote from Mike Schmidt, who has been on our show, the new head uh, football coach at UW, mm -hmm. said this, we might not be able to give our kids a national championship necessarily, but we can give them a national championship experience. Can you I do that? Yes, we definitely can. We've got great support. We've talked about the caliber of academics that we have. Um, it's the report, it's U.S. News and World Report, we're ranked number four nationally in the Midwest. It's just, it's incredible what we have to offer these young women and men that come to lacrosse. Uh, the opportunity and the people that they're going to be around and, you know, the, the, the opportunity to compete for championships, WIAC, and then for women's basketball, if, if we put ourselves in a position for a WIAC championship, we're placing ourselves in a, for a great opportunity on the national scene. A lot of our viewers probably asking this question. What's the game plan? What's the steps? What's the strategic plan for getting UW Lacrosse Eagle women's basketball from the tier that they currently currently have been in to the top tier? How are you gonna do that? Well it's obviously it's a process. Um, you know, right now we're really limited what we can do. We have con conditioning class that our players are involved with. We can't hit the court until October fifteenth. I've not seen them play in person. I've seen video on them from the past, but it's gonna be new, it's gonna be different. So, you know, for me, it's gonna be a matter of just seeing where we are. Uh, fundamentally, that's what I'm about. You know, obviously I'm a teacher of the game with my background in education. So teaching the fundamentals, doing things correctly, minimizing our mistakes, not beating ourselves, of just growing and getting better, putting ourselves this year in a position to compete and win more games. Um, I'd love for us to be in the top four in the WIAC, if not better, depending on how we, how we grow and evolve. Um, but then it's just a matter of continuing to recruit and draw those caliber players in here that want what we have from an academic, athletic standpoint and just 
continue to grow. You ready for a rapid fire drill? You know what that is, where you just some quick questions, quick answers. Sure. All right. Good segue into quote number three from Pat Summit. You ready? Ready. They don't care. Uh, most people get excited about games. Most coaches and fans and players get excited about games. But I get excited about practice because that's my classroom. That's what Pat Summit said. That's you? It's true. I love it. It is. I'm, I'm detailed in practice. I love it. We'll video it. Um, that's where you see the growth. You know, that's where you see players get better. That's where you see the light come on and something that was difficult before. Now they've got it. We're building habits. Um, we're forming that chemistry. Um, we're getting that ability to, to not let each other down that we talked about before. And they get excited. They build that confidence. We get to games and hopefully things are a lot easier. How are you going to, uh, real quickly again, rapid fire drill, how are you, you going to get, how are you going to get students? and community people uh, in, interested in the program, get it, getting their butt in the stands and market your program. Yeah, we, we want to play an exciting style. You know, we want to get up and down when we can, but we want to we want to be a team that everyone wants to come watch play because we play so hard, because we play hard for each other. Um, and obviously, the wins come, and you know that that will take care of itself. But you know, we want to enjoy the process. Uh, we don't want to worry so much about winning. If we're doing the right things, those wins will come, and so will the fans, and we're excited about that. Recruiting athletes, most very, very difficult, and that's part of the ingredient for success, obviously. Um, nutrition, all those kind of things, the whole package. Uh, but what are you going to say quickly? Uh, how are you going to address your players on October 15th at 12.01 a.m., which a lot of teams start, by the way? Yeah. How are you going to address <laughs> your players on day one? I'm a player. You're the coach. What are you going to say to me? We're, we're going to get after it. We're going to work hard, but we're going to have fun while we're doing it. You know, I want a, a great focus on the, the little things that's going to make a big, big difference. So listening and learning and just bringing great energy. Two words that are really important to me is attitude and effort. Bring a great attitude, have a great effort, and we'll accomplish a lot of things. So um, I, I want it to be fun. I want them to enjoy the experience, but we're going to work hard. We're going to get after it, and we want to try to get a little bit better every day. My coach used to say to our, us as players, your attitude determines your altitude. The mental is to the physical as four is to one. Yep. Four times more important from the neck up. That's what you're all about, aren't you? No doubt. That was, Tara always said that quote, mental is to physical as four is to one. And it's it's so true. You know, you've got to, um, you just keep giving each other. And that's things that we're talking about in our conditioning class. You know, being unselfish, give to each other. Um, you know, just again, just having each other's back, being there for each other, attitude and effort. And it's a process. Uh, final quote, uh, there's no elevator to success. You got to take the stairs. It takes time, you know, you got to build it. But you build it with, first of all, great people and those great people doing things the right way and doing it together. And that's right. what we want to accomplish. Well, it has been a pleasure. Absolute pleasure. Thanks. To get to know you uh, briefly. Maybe we can extend that. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll have you and a couple players on uh, as the season unfolds in November. And uh, we want to, again, welcome you to this community and uh, uh, welcome you to the show. Thanks, Terry. I appreciate it. It's All been right. awesome. Love lacrosse. Okay. All right. It's been a great interview. We'll be back with some film clips from recent football games right after this. LASIK surgery at Mayo Clinic Health System. You can, I can see, I don't have to wear my glasses for driving, uh, to go to the movies, for reading. And uh, I think it's a wonderful thing to offer people uh, that freedom and uh, independence of lenses, whether they're contact lenses or glasses, to be able to function every day from the morning to the evening and not just, and not think about it. For more information on LASIK surgery, contact Mayo Clinic Health System. At Schneider Heating and Air Conditioning, we have assembled the championship team. Who listens to what your needs are. We install carrier comfort systems that improve the comfort, efficiency, and the air quality of your home and workplace. We serve you with highly trained technicians who are prompt, friendly, and honest. For gold star treatment, turn to the experts, Carrier and Schneider Heating and Air Conditioning. Schneider Heating and Air Conditioning.
Your comfort is our business. Welcome back to Seven River Sports. I hope you enjoyed our interview with Karen Middleton, the new women's head basketball coach at UWL. She will do a great job, and I'm excited for the Eagles. Well, Art Faye and I were at UWL for a classic intra-city battle, Central and Aquinas. Central had been struggling with an offense that just would not fire. But they finally found that fire and that momentum jumping to a 19-7 halftime lead. They found another gear in the third quarter, scoring 29 unanswered points, amassing 533 yards of offense from their no-huddle spread formation. Red Raider quarterback Matt Johnson finished the day with five touchdowns, two rushing and three passing. Austin Steele, 64 yards and two TDs. Speedster A.C. Riley, 177 yards. And Duke Luth, two rushing touchdowns for the Red Raiders. Aquinas was led by quarterback C.J. Nolte, 18 of 37 for 365 yards. John Salvadelli, C.J. Nolte, and Conley Malone scored for the Blue Goals. Final, Central 48, Aquinas 20. Central hosts Logan on Friday, and we'll be there to bring you the action. Aquinas is also playing an MVC rival, West Salem. Well, our other game featured the Holman Vikings and the West Salem Panthers at Empire Stadium. Holman scored twice in the first quarter on a spectacular 99-yard run from Seth Wilson and a Craig Newsom interception from, for six points from 59 yards out. West Salem's Brent Heileman, a 31-yard pass from quarterback Ryan Byrne, 14-7 after one. Defense took center stage in the second quarter with only one score, a Drew Becker two-yard run for the Vikings. West Salem could not find the end zone in the second half as Holman had touchdowns by Seth Wilson and again by Drew Becker. Final from Empire Stadium, 33-7 Vikings. I hope you enjoyed today's show and hopefully you'll have a enjoyable and an active weekend. So long from all of us here at Seven Rivers Sports.